Most of the time, we don't think much about our water. We just turn on the tap and there it is. Conserving water is important. And when you conserve hot water, you can save money. Today on Powerhouse, we'll explore the benefits of a water softening system. We'll go to an expert to learn about options to improve hot water availability and efficiency. And we'll also show you how to install a few items to maximize every single drop we use. It's The Water Show. That's next on Alliant Energy's Powerhouse. Hey, Pete, what are you up to? Well, Megan, since today's show is focused on water, I thought we should start off with a toast. Well, that's appropriate. Should we toast to soft water or hot water or saving water? Well, since we're going to show how all three are related, let's toast to all three. Cheers. Sounds good. You know, water quality is very important to our first guest. Mark Dovitz is a water technology expert and has been providing water treatment options to homeowners for 29 years. Mark, thanks for taking the time to talk with us. We're excited to learn about water softener systems. Let's go to the basics. What are the benefits of soft water? Sure, two big benefits. One is the appliances, the mechanical infrastructure in your home. Protect the water heater, the dishwasher, any water using appliance is gonna perform better, last longer with soft water. Second big benefit is when it comes to soaps and cleaners. With soft water, you're gonna use about 75% less soaps and cleaners to get the same job done. One of the first things the consumer notices is just how their skin feels. The most obvious thing is that soaps are going to lather much better and because they don't have that tacky soap scum or calcium scum in their soap, it's going to rinse better. So what the customer feels is a much silkier skin. They notice that right away. Second biggest thing they're going to notice is when they pull dishes out of the dishwasher, they're going to be spot free because there's no calcium left in the water, the water sheets off, the dishes dry better. Those are going to be the two most obvious benefits. You also talk about extending the life of appliances, another benefit. Correct. When we look at something like a water heater, if we don't have any calcium in the water, that won't lime up in the water heater. That water heater is going to last much longer because of it. We're always interested here on Powerhouse in terms of energy savings. Let's take that over uh, savings energy in terms of heating my water. Yes, whether it's a gas or an electric water heater, you will see about a 30% savings in the energy cost to keep that water heater running. Uh, and that's, that, that's sizable, but we're not talking about a lot of energy, uh, electricity going into a system like this. Correct. A high efficiency water softener like this, it's all digital technology. It only draws about two cents worth of electricity per month to keep the system operating. That, that's very, very minimal, Mark. Let's, let's uh, talk a little bit about ballpark costs uh, in terms of, give us a sense of uh, installation coming in and putting in a water softener system. Okay, as far as installation, the home we have plumbed in here, we've actually run hard water back to the outside faucets. There's no benefit to softening water going out to the lawn. High efficiency softener will save about 46% in terms of operating costs, energy, salt consumption, et cetera, versus a traditional softener. Installation is typically included with the purchase of a water softener. So whether we're starting with an entry level unit at around $1,400 or running with a high efficiency unit for around $2,400, installation is going to be wrapped up in that total cost. Okay. And maintenance, what am I looking at uh, maintenance for the year? That's a great question because maintenance is almost nothing. It's really a forget it type appliance. Biggest operating cost for the homeowner is just salt. Salt is being used to clean the water softener to keep that softening resin charged with a high efficiency unit, 20 to 25 pounds of salt per month to keep the system running. With a less energy efficient unit, they may be looking at 50 to 60 pounds of salt per month. We have a 250 pound salt storage tank. You can fill the storage tank. It takes care of itself after that. Technology, uh, you know, we hear about apps, an app for a water softening system. Yep, this unit is set up with that app, and that's really where a lot of our efficiency comes in. It adjusts for temperature, changing water quality, salt dosages. It's Wi-Fi enabled, so the softener can call our office and let us know if there's a technical problem. The softener can also notify you on your phone if there's a leak. So if you're on vacation and it detects a leak, it can let you know you can actually turn off your softener while on vacation. 
I do want to ask you a little bit about uh, a question about water taste. Uh, do I notice? Do I notice that? Some folks will notice a difference in taste. Taste becomes a very personal discussion, but a lot of times that discussion right away goes into water purification, where we can filter the water to bottled water quality for just pennies a glass and no energy consumption. And that would be a, an add-on to a system a little bit to, in terms of making a little bit more of a high end? Correct. That's something we would add in for the consumer in addition to the water softener. Well, Mark, you've shared a lot of great information, a lot of benefits about having a water softening system. Thanks for sharing your knowledge with us. Of course. Thank you, Pete. And if you'd like more information about how you can save on your water usage, visit our website at powerhousetv.com. Did you know a few of the telltale signs that you have hard water include lime scale buildup on faucets and shower heads, or in pipes and appliances? Your soaps and shampoos don't lather properly, or you may have dingy or foul-smelling laundry. While hard water itself is not particularly harmful to humans, soft water has been shown to alleviate some or all of these household problems. You can also save energy and money here in the laundry room. 90% of the power used in your washer goes to heating the water. You don't need hot water to get your clothes clean. Laundry detergent is the main factor, not hot water. So use the cold water setting instead and be sure to use detergent that is meant for cold water. Plus, cooler water is gentler on your clothes. Hey Megan, how many times do you suppose we've wrapped a water heater tank? <laughs> a few, that's for sure. But it's always a great way to save energy and money on heating your water. And what if I told you there was a way to have hot water without the big tank or the wrapping? Mmm, tankless water heater. I like it. Tell me more. That's what I thought you'd say. Lucky for you, I caught up with just the guy who could tell us all about it. Justin Ross from Colony Plumbing, Heating and Air Conditioning. Justin, thanks for joining us today. We're very eager to learn more about tankless water heaters. You're the guy to fill us in. Talk to us about a tankless water system. A uh, tankless system pretty much is just a system that we're, has a small tank and it heats up the water on demand as you need it, so you never run out of hot water. How does the tankless system work? Get, take us through that process. Um, pretty simple. Cold water goes in and there's a stainless steel tank up here, a dual, it's actually two tanks. It heats that water up on demand. It could be full fire, half fire, low fire. Um, so if you have high fire, it'll go through there, uh, warm up the water, and you know just as much as you need. Is, is a tankless system right for every house, or how does that vary? Um, so there is a flow rating on this guy. So if you do have a house that has like more than three bathrooms, you know if you're using them all at once, this thing won't run out of hot water, but it'll reduce the flow. So okay. you might have to put in two and cascade them, or a storage tank. All right. So as I look at this. Uh, an, el an elaborate system and, and uh, talk to us a little bit about the, what you have set up here. It looks like a, a little more piping. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a little more um, uh, extreme than a normal water heater. Um, hot and cold go in gas, but then um, this model has a recirc line which comes in and which all, it sends that water, hot water through loops so you have that hot water instantly at your faucet. Okay, yep. and, and the flu, I've got to be aware of that, right? Yep, yep, there's an intake and an exhaust that have to go out with this model, yep. Okay, but it really notice, I mean, it's much smaller than the conventional water tank, right? Yeah, yeah, 80% less space than the average tank water heater, yep. Okay, all right, so I, I'm interested, I'm a homeowner, I, I want to go to a tankless system, you come out, walk me through a little bit of the process when you come out and, and tell me about putting this in. Um, we'll come in and we'll have to look at your gas, uh, main gas line, make sure it can handle this unit. This unit is uh, 200,000 BTUs, where a standard water heater is 45,000 BTUs. So we have to make sure your main gas line is sized right. And then um, we prefer to put them on outside wall because with the flues, because this unit has flues that have to go out. So it's easier just to go up and out. There's a determined length that you can only run. I mean, it can go in an old house, it can go in a new house, but it's... Okay, the, yeah. you, there's a good thing because we talk about obviously in a new house, I mean, it's, it, you, you build for it, but older house, retrofit, uh, take us through that, Justin. Um, as long as you meet all the standards, the BT rating, um, if you're, you can run the flues outside without, you know, 
being by a window, um, you gotta have a close to a floor drain because it's a condensating unit, you know, okay. all those things. If you have all that, then yeah, definitely. When we've talked about advantages, what's a disadvantage to having a tankless system? One is it has to be maintenance once a year. We have to come out and run um, a pump through the, just the tank itself to get it cleaned out, okay. decalcify it. Justin, if I switch from my conventional over to this, uh, is, is the process, is it a, a difficult process for a homeowner to make that switch? Um, usually it takes our plumbing tech about a day. I mean, they're pretty pretty quick, yep. Let's talk a little bit about costs. Uh, putting in a tankless system, ballpark, what's uh, putting this system in, how much is it gonna cost? Um, so like a standard tank water heater is about 14 to $1,500. Okay. For this unit, it'd probably be like 35 to $3,700. Okay, so if there's a little more cost. How about energy savings over the year? Um, it's way more efficient than a standard water heater. It's only firing up when you need water, where a tank is always heating and heating and heating just to keep that tank satisfied. It's about $100 a year is what you'll save. You. Okay, and the lifespan of a tankless system is what? Um, this guy has a stainless steel tank in there, and that tank is warranted for 15 years. Compared to the traditional conventional tank system, is how long? Like six to eight. So yeah. about twice as long with this with this tankless system. Yep. Okay. Yep. Well, Justin, you you've shared a lot of great information with us about the tankless system. Thanks. For, stay put because I know Megan has more questions for you, and if you'd like to learn more about putting a water heater in your home, visit our website at powerhousetv.com. Did you know? The first electric tankless water heater intended for homes was invented in 1929 by a company in Germany called Stiebel Eltron. The addition of gas-fired models, improvements in efficiency, and the space-saving design made them popular all over Europe in the 1970s. In the 1990s, the U.S. market began to see a surge in requests for tankless and hybrid water heating systems. Did you know? In 1992, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, introduced Energy Star as a voluntary labeling program designed to identify and promote energy efficient products to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Computers and monitors were the first labeled products. We're happy to have Justin back with us to talk about another potential energy saving system. This is a hot water circulation system. Justin, explain to us what that is and how it works. Well, what this system does is it pushes the hot water from the water heater immediately out to the furthest fixture in a loop. Why does it go all the way out to the furthest fixture? Well, on the way out there, it's passing everything else in the house, so everything else is immediately getting that hot water as fast as the end fixture. Okay, so it hits the laundry, the dishwasher. Yeah, everything every it passes. Every along yep. the way. Yep. It sounds like that might use more energy. How do you keep that efficient? It learns the homeowner's usage and then it'll adapt to that so it only turns on during those major uses times. It also has a, a temperature setting where it has a probe on the water line back here where it'll sense the certain temperature water and only turn on and off at certain points. Okay, let's talk about the cost of the system. What's the price range? Um, depending on the install, it's about eight to $1,200. That's a pretty broad range. What would the circumstances be that might require the higher end of that figure? Um, some basements are finished, so you'd have to cut holes and feed that line all the way to the furthest fixture. So ideally, this is like new construction? Yeah, new construction, and if your basement isn't finished. Okay. Can you walk us through an installation process and explain how the system works as you go? Absolutely. So you put a T in before the furthest fixture at the end of the house and you run a water line back it goes through your research pump which then pumps it down into the water heater and then that pump pumps it out this way so it's making this constant loop and um, water is always in there so it, when you turn on the faucets it's instant hot water. Where you save money is at the faucet. That minute you're waiting for the hot water to get there all that water is going down the drain. I can't imagine. So instead of waiting three minutes in my big old house for the water to come, it would just be immediate. Yeah, right. It'll be right there, right when you need it. That's a lot of water savings. Yeah. So how is the water heated in this system? Is it a traditional tank water heater or could you use a tankless one? You can use them both. Um, the tankless water heater has an option that you can buy. It's a separate model that has that recirculation port and there's a pump already inside there that has the same adapting ability as this pump here. Oh, so it's already built into that particular unit. Yeah. And this is the actual unit itself. It's yeah, really yep. small. Under what circumstances would you recommend a product like this? 
Um, ideal situation would be is when your water heater is really far away from your furthest fixture. I mean, you want the hot water right there. It might take a minute. This guy will get it there right away. Um, smaller houses, um, it's, it would still be getting the hot water there faster, but it wouldn't be saving as much money and energy. Right, for people that have sprawling homes and the laundry's all the way on the other end. Right. Yeah, that yep. makes sense. Yep. Great, good information. Your local plumbing professional is a great resource to provide you more information on the costs and benefits of a hot water recirculation system for your powerhouse. Did you know there are systems available that can reclaim some of the heat from shower water and other heated water escaping down drains? This technology can increase your energy efficiency and water heating capacity. You can learn additional specifics by searching drain water heat recovery on energy.gov. Here's a quick and easy way to save water in the kitchen. Put the faucet lever on your kitchen sink into the cold position when you're doing short tasks like rinsing off vegetables. If the lever's in the hot position, it will start to draw hot water firing up your water heater. The hot water may not even reach the faucet before you're finished with this little job, therefore wasting energy on hot water you wouldn't even use. Between brushing our teeth, flushing the toilet, and bathing, the bathroom is where we use the most water in our homes. One easy way to save water and energy is to take a shower instead of a bath. The average bath uses between 30 and 50 gallons of water compared to a 10 minute shower with a water saving shower head that uses 25 gallons. In addition, if two people in the home cut their showers down by just one minute each, they could save $30 a year. Well, Megan, it's become clear that there's a lot of tools and technologies to help us keep our energy dollars from washing down the drain. That's right. Now, so far, we've talked about some fairly big investment items. Now, let's focus on a few simple DIY adjustments that will make our water use more efficient. That sounds good. We'll focus on three key areas, showers, sinks, and everyone's favorite, toilets. Perfect, let's go. Now let's start with sink aerators. Aerators help to moderate the flow of water that comes out of the faucet. Some aerators restrict flow more than others, so choosing the right one for the way you use your sink will give you the best of conservation and the best of convenience. Now if your main use is for filling pots or other large containers, you may want to consider an aerator that allows a flow rate of one and a half gallons per minute, or no aerator at all. If you mainly use your sink to wash your hands, dishes, or foods, an aerator that restricts flow to a half a gallon per minute is a good solution for you. If your sink is used for a combination of both of these things, strike a happy medium. You can save energy and water without hindering your ability to fill containers with a one gallon per minute aerator. Another option for you is to invest in one like this, which has three different settings. Now you'll need to determine what type of aerator you need. Some of these are threaded on the inside, like that, and some are threaded on the outside, like that. You'll need to take a good look at your faucet to know. Materials and styles of spray can vary as well, and all those things can impact price, though many are available for less than $10. To install, you'll likely need a wrench to assist, but not much else. For care and maintenance, you'll need to clean or replace your aerators regularly. These powerful little tools can result in significant water and dollar savings over the course of a year. I've got a handy item you're gonna to wanna to check out. This is called a ladybug shower head adapter. If you've ever run your shower for minutes on end to get it to the right temperature, you know the sound of money pouring down the drain. Once water reaches 95 degrees Fahrenheit, the adapter cuts the water to a trickle. That's the sign the water's ready. Then you simply flip a switch to start your shower. The unit automatically resets itself for the next shower once you're done. 
The cost of the adapter is just over $20. Installation is quick and easy, just a few simple steps. If you routinely leave the shower running for a minute to warm up, this adapter could help save you $75 in energy and roughly 2,700 gallons of water each year. And we save the best for last, the toilet. A running toilet is an obvious self-reporting leak detector, but sometimes water loss from toilet tank leaks are sneakier than that. Here's an easy and inexpensive way to detect if you're losing water from your toilet tank or not. These dye tablets can be purchased from any home improvement store for less than a dollar. Place a dye tablet in the tank and wait for about 15 to 20 minutes. After that time, if there is colored water in the toilet bowl, you have water leaking out of the tank into the bowl. This could be caused by an offset or degrading flapper valve. Adjustment of the chain or replacement of the valve or seal can usually solve the problem. Now here's an added bonus. If you have food coloring in your pantry, you probably don't even need the tablets to do this quick detection test. Just put a few drops of food coloring in the tank and watch for the result. We hope you enjoyed learning all about water this week on Powerhouse. Today we got to learn about the benefits of soft water. We explored the energy saving options of tankless water heaters and recirculation systems. We checked out some water saving technology too. And we chased down a water leak and put a stop to it. Visit PowerhouseTV.com for more tips and information on saving water and energy. Every little improvement brings you one step closer to making your house a powerhouse.